Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a follow-up video to yesterday's video, and this is a perfect example of why I love YouTube, why I love having a, people who watch the videos and who comment and who respond to things, because I did something yesterday with the step sequencer that was way more complicated than it needed to be. And I think I figured out why that ended up being that way, partly because when I originally had tested this out, it there i think i put something on the wrong channel but the step sequencer is even smarter than i had supposed and um, i wanted to point that out one of uh, the viewers sent me a, a, a comment and um, let me get that up real quick because i thought it was really useful la winter um, wrote out in the comments a, a, a lot easier way of looking at this and then i realized that what I had done wrong with the whole thing. Anyway, I just want to show you that real quick, um, but also just say thanks to all of you for watching and uh, for speaking up because sure, I think I know a lot about Logic Pro, but it's so complicated sometimes and there's always more to learn. And as they you know release all these features that you know we use in a certain way, uh, that each of us are going to use them in different ways. And I hope that you'll continue to, you know, leave comments and call out crap when you see it uh, and just be some of the best uh, viewers in this community of logic learners on the whole platform of YouTube. So uh, essentially I had used two different instruments and sent it through the environment. And now there's really two ways of doing this. And this is what I went back. I still couldn't figure out why it wasn't showing up, um, but I think it was a mistake on my part. When I come in here to the plus, now that I have the instrument and remix loaded, all of the things just show up in the list of lanes. So I can just put uh, the actual, in the step sequencer, uh, I can actually load up automation for the different effects and things that are up here the other thing this is what um what was in the comments yesterday we have a learn mode and with the learn mode so let's just start this from scratch and let's see if i can delete these here two 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 oh it's not letting me delete the things i don't think it's because they're it's just the last one anyway so we put this into learn mode and then I just click and drag on this and the gate on and off and the gate, the gator rate both show up. So you can do it that way. Super easy. Then we turn it on and uh, we'll, we'll turn it off after one bar here and then we can send out the data we want. Um, so I can, you know, do eighth note or sixteenth note. Like that. So now, that's the original sound. Let's engage play. And now we have the exact same effect with one track and a lot less work than the video I showed yesterday. The nice thing about the video from yesterday is that it does help you see some of the stuff with the environment. Uh, the bad part about the video is that it showed you stuff with the environment. If we could get rid of the environment and do everything outside of it like this, then that'd be great. This other video still applies uh, for certain tasks. Um, so there are some things that we would do that with, with the transformer. Um, but in this case, we don't need to necessarily. So for instance, I can come out here and you can see we have a pan, but some of the paintings, if we do things with, uh, some of the more complex painting surround sound and stuff that will show up in many cases here. Let's switch that to a binaural panner for a second. So main pan, here's the binaural stuff right there. Um, but 
in some cases, if we want to use some of the MIDI effects and go to there, then that's going to be a fix around it. If we want to use, for instance, the modulator, um, which wouldn't let me learn the gator, as I demonstrated in the previous video, uh, then I would still have to use the environment to do that. Uh, because the modulator doesn't like learning more than one parameter at a time, it just does the first one, which is the on trigger, uh, that becomes an issue, and we can't really edit the data easily. So I'm going to leave up the other video. Uh, it still has information. It's still one way of doing things. But I wanted to just you know show you this other way of doing this that's a little bit easier and uh, in some circumstances going to be the, the lot better way to do it. Thanks again to everybody who's watching uh, these videos and um, more coming soon.